Are you suffering from an autoimmune disease? Are you worried about your hair falling out? Are you worried about your hair coming out in clumps or just getting thinner and thinner? Many women who suffer from autoimmune diseases, they battle hair loss. In this video, I will discuss the most common causes of hair loss in the autoimmune diseases that I treat, as well as I will share with you exciting new treatments recently approved for hair loss. Rheumatologistoncall.com Hi, I'm Dr. Diana Granita, a board-certified rheumatologist who treats people with autoimmune diseases every day. Many of my female patients battle autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, lupus, and autoimmune thyroiditis, and they also suffer from hair loss. Before discussing the most common causes of hair loss, let me explain to you a few things. What distinguishes a normal from abnormal hair loss? Shedding, also known as normal hair loss, is a natural aspect of the hair development cycle. And it is crucial to realize that daily hair loss is common and typically doesn't mean that you have a disease. On average, a person can lose between 50 and 200 hairs per day. However, excessive hair loss exceeding these numbers can result in diffuse or patchy hair loss, which we call alopecia. And there are multiple forms of alopecia. Number one, patchy alopecia areata. And this is a hair loss appearing in one or more oval-shaped patches in the scalp or various regions of the body. And typically, it looks like a coin size area of baldness. Number two, alopecia totalis. This is a form of hair loss where the loss of hair is so profound that can lead to complete or nearly complete baldness across the entire scalp. Number three, alopecia universalis. This is even more extensive and profound hair loss across the scalp, the face, and the entire body where hair would be normally present. Now, when my patients start complaining of hair loss, I begin my evaluation by looking for different causes, like vitamin or mineral deficiencies, such as vitamin D, iron or biotin deficiency. And then I look for nutritional factors, stress level, and I check for exposure to pollution because all of this can influence the risk of hair loss. I also ask my patients if they had hair treatments like coloring, bleaching, or heating, which can also exacerbate hair loss. I look for hormonal changes, which can occur, for example, after pregnancy or in conditions like PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome, which can also cause hair loss. If my patients are suffering from an autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis, thyroid diseases, lupus, dermatomyositis, scleroderma, or inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's disease, and their disease is still active with a lot of inflammation, this can be the cause of additional hair loss. More than that, certain autoimmune diseases involving the areas covered by hair, for example, psoriasis, psoriasis of the scalp or lupus, can also lead to hair loss due to excessive inflammation in that area. The good news is that treating the autoimmune disease and reducing inflammation can also lead to hair regrowth. Another cause of hair loss in patients with autoimmune diseases can be even the medications that we use to treat the autoimmune diseases. Let me give you some examples. Methotrexate, leflunomide, Celsept, and Humira can cause hair loss as a side effect of the treatment. If you are taking methotrexate or Areva, it is advisable to take folic acid with these medications. And if hair loss still persists, you may increase the dose of the folic acid, but you can also discuss alternatives with your rheumatologist. Now, 
for those of you interested in treating hair loss in autoimmune diseases, here are some options. First of all, it is important to undergo a thorough evaluation and even consult with a dermatologist. While many products are advertised on the market for hair loss, let me discuss about some that are scientifically supported treatments. Number one, topical minoxidil or Rogaine. If you apply this one every day at a 5% concentration, it was shown to promote hair regrowth. Now be consistent and apply it every day to make it work. In some people, it can cause scalp itching and irritation. Number two, ketoconazole shampoo. Some studies suggest that this type of shampoo may help hair regrowth in certain patients. Number three, vitamins and supplements. While biotin and collagen supplements are advertised all the time, they may not be effective unless there is a deficiency. But blends like Nutrafol, which contains a combination of vitamins A, D, C, E, biotin, zinc, selenium, and iodine have been shown to be promising in some clinical trials. Number four, lead light therapy or low level laser therapy using this type of devices which can utilize this technology may be helpful and you can see results in about three to six months. Number five, platelet rich plasma therapy or PRP therapy. This is a technique that involves taking your blood, isolating the plasma and platelets, which are very rich in growth factors, and then injected them again into the scalp to stimulate hair growth. Now, a groundbreaking class of medication called JAK inhibitors, originally used in treating patients with rheumatoid arthritis, have been approved for severe alopecia areata. In June 2022, FDA approved the drug called baricitinib or Lumniant for people with severe alopecia areata. It was shown that a dose of 4 mg per day over 36 months had a good effect compared to placebo or a lower dose like 2 mg. Another drug from the same class of medication, which is called tofacinib or Zelgens, have also been shown efficacy in regrowing hair, but this is not FDA approved yet. Newer drugs from the same class of medications are now under evaluation and hopefully they will be approved soon, such as this one. A few side effects were also reported after using these medications, such as acne, upper respiratory tract infections, and increased muscle enzymes, but also an increase in cholesterol. Before starting any new medication, my advice is to discuss it with your physician and make sure you understand the cause of hair loss. If you're interested, I put some links to some recommended products in the comment section. Now let me know, what products have you used for hair loss and they were helpful to you? Maybe they will be helpful to others. I hope this video was very helpful to you. If you want to learn more about autoimmune diseases, about the signs and the symptoms, you should watch this video where I will discuss all about the signs that are common in patients with autoimmune diseases. Until the next time, stay healthy, stay curious, and stay informed. Thank you. Rheumatologistoncall.com